Hey there, and many thanks for tuning in to Y254. Apologies, we are starting our news bit a little bit late due to technical hitches, but we are here. I trust that you have been well. It is the 12th of January 2022. A very good Wednesday evening to you. My name is Dereva Hilary. Welcome to the broadcast. Elders drawn from the Somali community have castigated Meru Governor Keraito Murungi over his directive to have the Kames belonging to Somali community held had as forcefully driven out of Meru County. This is following last week's clash pitting Carmel herders and farmers from Meru County that resorted to death of more than seven people. Led by Vice Chairman of Somali Council of Elders Osman Bidu and the Chairman of the Somali Herders Grazing Committee Abdi Kadir Mohammed, members of the Somali community termed Governor Kiraito's directive as insightful and full of hate, arguing that they are Kenyans and they have the right to live in any county of their choice, including Meru County. An operation to forcefully flash out the Somali community herders and their cameras from the Meru area bordering Isiolo County began three days ago with herders now decrying physical harassment by the police officers conducting the operation. While over 1,600 cameras have so far been displaced from their grazing area addressing journalists in Camp at Kambi Ashraf along the border of the two counties, the elders demanded that the government agencies should take action. Sisi ni wakazi wa Tigani vile tumeambiwa lakini ile mkasa ilitokea sasa tukufurahia sisi kama wamama tumewacha wajane watoto wetu wameacha mayatima manyumba zimechomwa na hiyo sisi hatujui kwa nini imetokea kama ni wafugaji walikoseana watu wangeenda kudil huko mistuni watafute suluhisho lakini si kuja kwa manyata kuchoma manyumba kufukuza watoto Hmm? kufukuza ngamia wakipitiza ndani ya manyata wakiwa na vifaru maaskari wame, wamechapwa wa mama zetu wako hapo wenye wamechapwa hawahesabiki watoto wetu karibu wapate accident ile nini yao ikuwa na kimbia ngamia imepitizwa ndani ya manyata karibu iumize watu ngamia zingine zimevunjika vunjika zingine hata zinalala kwa barabara kama jana yenye walifanya so hiyo kisa sisi hatujafurahia sisi kama wamama tunataka security kila usiku tunaogopa Hatuna raha ndani ya nyumba yetu vile hiyo serikali imefanya juzi hatujafurahia kabisa. Mimi naitwa Mzee Osman Bidu. First chairman Somali Elders. Mimi na na laani ile maneno juzi walitokea bande ya Tigani ya East ambao mahali naitwa Malbeshilmi kwa lugha ya zamani lakini siku hizi naitwa eh, Eh, RDU area hiyo maneno ambao walitokea kifo ambao wa community waligusana wali na kifo walitokea na na laani hiyo maneno atuko tiari kuunga mkono na hiyo kama jamii ya Somalia atuko tiari and now in politics, Kenny member of parliament Kanini Kega has refuted claims that Jubilee party is, is dead, saying that plans to revive the party are underway. Uh, speaking to the press at Gitero Primary School in Kenny, Nyeri County, Kega said that the party is still alive and running its activities and currently ranks second in terms of membership. E, the Kenny Legislature also say that plans to hold the National Delegates Convention NDC that was postponed in December are still on. He said the Jubilee Party NDC will be held by March this year, adding that the NDC had been put on hold due to ongoing discussion on the Political Parties Amendment Bill of 2021 Act that is before Parliament. On the same note, Kega has continued showing his immense support to the political parties amendment bill, saying that he has no doubt that bill is, will say through once it is tabled before the Senate. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are solid, we are good. In fact, if you go to the register, the uh, political parties, um, the register of political parties, you will still see that Jubilee is ranked second in terms of uh, the membership. So we are still there. We are proposing, we are hoping that uh, either before the end of the month or early February, we will be able to do our NDC. But we want to do our NDC after the, uh, the law is uh, fully enacted. 
because there are some decisions that we will be making in the NDC which could have some implication, you know, on the law. So we want, first of all, to dispense of with this uh, law. Then immediately, we as a party, we will have an NDC because we don't want to do two NDCs. Actually, I foresee a situation whereby some of the parties that will be in Azimio will also do another NDC to endorse some of the things that will have captured, that will be captured in this law. So we will wait until we, the law is assented to, then after that we'll be able to do our NDC. But the party is there, the party will be there even, even when we go to Azimio. Even if you go to Azimio, which will be the, the, the big still on uh, politics the fires rift valley regional commissioner uh, george natembea has resigned natembea announced the, his resignation wednesday stating that he is now fully focused on his transoya gubernatorial bid speaking to the press in nakuru the rift valley boss thanked interior cabinet secretary fred machengi and his principal secretary karanja kibishu for giving him an opportunity to serve in that capacity natembea acknowledged the role he's his seniors and juniors that played in making his chain as the Rift Valley Regional Commissioner a success. He will vie for the position of the Governor on Democratic Action Party of Kenya, DPK. Mungira naetua Nobat Jara Komora, Mungira naetua Fred Mbiti, Mungira naetua Kidion Serai, na hile wa mwishwa naetua other komwandi bunde wa wile wame staffu wengine ni madc ambao na ya kudumia taifa hili ni meudumu kama hiyo era ya notre but kama kila mtu ya play the part hii shida tukekua tume tumemaliza kabisa kuna shida ya bunduki bunduki zimejaa huko mnajukua muna kumbuka tulikuwa tumepanga kufanya disarmament and I want to confirm kwamba we've never done any disarmament tukekua tunapanga mipango tunawanda operation orders all the seven counties are mostly affected. Nathan is a commander, but Napanga. But somehow the timing has not been very good. Wakati mengine inakosa mambo ya budget. It's a very expensive uh, undertaking. So Napata pesa inakosana. And then again. And with that political story, we take a very short commercial break. Much more on the other side when we come back. Please stay with us. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. You're watching the new business here on Y254. Now, human rights organization in Nakuru have raised the alarm over the rising execution of women rights defenders in Kenya. They have condemned the killing of Elizabeth Ibrahim Ekaru, who was murdered in Isiolo on January 3rd, 2022, over land dispute led by the by Center for Enhancing Democracy and Good Governance Programs Manager Paul Masesi, the defenders in a statement termed Elizabeth's murder barbaric and brings to the fore the pervasive nature of violence against women and, and girls. The activists activists termed the cases as example of the price that women right defenders have to pay for protecting human rights and advancing social economic cultural and political rights the organization wants the perpetrators brought to book they also want the president's office together with the ministry of environment and forestry to publicly condemn and declare the matter of women and human rights defenders alarming and consider the issues a crisis the attorney general has the attorney general has also been challenged to fast track the review and adoption of the human rights defenders policy a tool designed to give guidance of the work of not only women human rights defenders but all human rights defenders and their protection by the state remain optimistic that the suspects will eventually be convicted because if they are not the tree of impunity will be watered we wait with a pated breath to see that day when the court convicts the murderers of human rights defenders. We cannot stand aside and wait for, injust for justice to happen. We push for justice to happen. So that's why we're here today. You must be aware that uh, uh, the death of uh, Elizabeth Ekaru uh, comes at a time where we have uh, experienced increased femicide in Kenya especially of human rights defenders. 
So this, uh, uh, we colleagues in Nakuru, we call on the state to ensure the protection of human rights defenders in the course of, of their work. Here in Nakuru, uh, we also experience many cases of, uh, of this nature. So it is our duty as human rights defenders to come out strongly and speak against uh, vices of this nature. Barbaric murder of Elizabeth Ekaru brings to the fore the pervasive nature of patriarchy, system systematic structures that work against women and girls, and incidences of violence against women and girls in Kenya, especially targeting... Elsewhere, 15 other dams have been constructed across the four wards of Mwingi West with an aim to boost food security in the area. Uh, speaking at Nzawa Market in Ngotani Ward, while he commissioned rehabilitation of Mwivano, other dam Mwingi West MP Charles Ngona said, so far 15 such dams have been sunk and others distilled, distillated. The legislator said National Irrigation Authority has heavily invested in the construction of the dams, thus enabling locals to get clean water and also water for irrigation. I'm going to add that each dam is set to benefit 5,000 households. Historic here in the Zawa location. Uh, we are here commissioning the situation of a new dam which was done during colonial time, 1920s, and it has not been done for centuries. So my special thanks to President Uru Mugai Kenyatta for facilitating National Irrigation Authority. And uh, we would like to express our gratitude to NIA for what they have done to our constituencies. They have heavily invested on us in Mwinki West and we are really thankful and we will keep on fighting for their budget so that they can help our dear Kenyans in accessing clean water and also accessing water for irrigation. We thank NIP, we, we thank uh, NIA for what they have done. This is a dam which is going to... Nedra John uh, Bathwa, Senior Chief, Zara Location. Kwanza, Ntra Kushukuru, Serikali, Na Mwishmua, CNN. Sababu ya kupata saidis wa kuchimba hii dam, mwiwa ndam. Hii dam ilichimuli wakati wa mkoloni from 2020s. Na for now, kulinga vila tunaona, hii ndam itasaidia watu wengi. About five locations wala ambao atakuwa nafaidika na hii maji. Kwa hivyo kwa... Those dams are approximated to have cost 20 million shillings each. Now, in other news, members of Moranga Bar Owners Association have raised concerns over what they claimed as an increase in selling of counterfeit brews in the county. The association accused mushrooming wines and spirit shops saying they perpetrated the selling of substandard liquor drinks which pose health hazard to consumers. In a press conference in Moranga, the members led by the chairman Simon Njoroge accused those behind the business of selling fake alcoholic drinks saying they are putting lives in danger. The substandard alcoholic drinks, Njoroge said, they are tainting names of business people who are selling quality liquor. The chairman said the majority of those dealing with the fake liquor are not the uh, members calling security agents to crack down on individuals supplying and distributing counterfeits in the county. Some businessmen, because of greed for money, they have resorted in doing um, monkey business as you may find a wines and spirit which is supposed to be doing wholesale, they are doing retail. Some of them are even uh, opening bottles and, and, and giving drinks in glasses. Uh, some of them have started even operating like bars, which is not allowed. On behalf of, of Moranga Bar Owners Association and our patrons, we wish to make the following statement. We believe alcoholic drinks are meant to be enjoyed as a mean of relaxation after hard day's work and shared between friends as a way to ease social interactions. Alcoholic drinks should not be availed to distraction of our families, individuals, and in particular, shortening lives of our young 
people who are the future. And in business, the port of Mombasa has received a boost in its operation after receiving three state-of-the-art ship to show giantry cranes manufactured in Japan at a cost of 3.3 billion shillings. The equipment which arrived on board special vessel Christian MV Big Fine Big lift buffing from Japan, Dr. The Mombasa Port Second Container Terminal Bath Number 22. Speaking at the Quayside KPA, Acting General Manager Engineering Service Engineer Javan Wanga said the ship carrying the equipment started this voyage on uh, December 18. Speaking separately, KPA Principal Corporate Communications Officer Mr. Haji Masemo said that in 2005 KPA developed a master plan aimed at creating capacity by expanding baths and acquiring new cargo handling equipment. Masemo said that phase two of the second container terminal is almost complete where the new equipment will be installed and uh, it's also worth noting that uh, the specifications for these equipments have been done by the engineers in uh, kenya ports authority and uh, we will be something we take pride in uh, the capacity of what it will do in a year it will be doing uh, more than 550,000 TUs annually and at the moment, the port is doing about 1.2. So you can imagine that will be another uh, about uh, 50 plus percent of the cargo that we handle through the, uh, the gantries in the port of Mombasa. Uh, of course, uh, the operations is in such a way that uh, the other complementing equipments, including the rubber tired gantries that I've talked about, we have terminal tractors as well that uh, will also be hauling containers from the yards to the, uh, to the shore. Now away from Kenya in Cameroon, a prominent opposition lawmaker and a barrister in Cameroon from the opposition Social Democratic Front, SDF, has been shot dead in Bamenda city in the northwest. Dennis Nkelemo told the BBC that gunmen forced Senator Henry Kamende to get out of his car and then shot him in the chest, party communication secretary. Nkelemo added that the motive for the killing is unclear. Bamenda is the main English-speaking city in Cameroon under the center of a political crisis that has led to armed conflict between separatists and the military. According to the International Crisis Group, the fight has killed more than 6,000 people and displaced about 1 million people since 2017. And finally, in sport, Manchester City are in poll position to sign Erling Haaland in the uh, player dis if the player decides to move to the Premier League. The player is expected to leave Borussia Dortmund in the summer when his 64 million shillings pounds release clauses becomes active. Manchester United, Chelsea and Liverpool are also monitoring Haaland's situation at his current club. City boss Pepe Guardiola has been looking for a striker since Sergio Aguero's departure last summer. And with that sports story, we mark the end of our news bit tonight. Many thanks for staying with us. We appreciate so much your company. Let's do this again next week, Wednesday. Until then, enjoy the rest of our programming. My name is Dereva Hilary. Goodbye and good night.